Is this scene the first day you're on surgery? You're scrubbed in, gloved in, now it's time to see What to touch, where to stand, so you don't get in trouble Welcome to the world of the sterile fields bubble So you wonder, can I touch that? No, it's not drapes, so don't touch that Itchy eyebrow, no, don't touch that Itchy bum hole, don't touch that sun Rule number one, the patient's at the very center When the drapes are up, only sterile people enter Hands above your waist and inside at all times Above the table's level is the invisible Not past the elbow. After Heights ideal as the literature shows. Follow basic rules, cause they're not too hard, and staff will call you LeBron. Cause you're an all-star. Yeah. Lights. Don't touch that. Still handles. You can touch that. Surgeon's iPod. Don't touch that sun. Still table. You can touch that. Straight mayos. You can touch that. Nurses tray. Don't touch that sun. Are only sterile from the table and above Go on, touch them below You won't get no love if you're sterile Only feel as such And if you run sure, then you better not touch And face a sterile field when you're moving around So the sterile touch are sterile You won't need to ungown Uh, yeah Some other rules you should know when you partner Passes back to back or front to front So you don't look like an ass Assume the sterile field is where you should stay And if you really have to be Then polite and step away Retractor, you can hold that. Retractor, hold that. Retractor, hold the retractor. Suture, you can cut that. Suture, too short. Suture, no, that's way too long. Suture, hand me the scissors. All right, hypothetical for a second. Let's pretend you're not scrubbed. You're actually just running the ward and doing a whole bunch of ward work. And you come into the OR, you got your mask on, the doc says, hey, Hey, come over here and have a look at this for a second. You say, hey, I got an opportunity to see. So I go up to the sterile field, but you don't know how close you should be. I mean, you want to be close to you can see, but at the same time, you don't want to be too close because you know the scrub nurse is just going to get really mad at you if you're too close. So how close should you be? Well, let me tell you. If you're not sterile, keep a foot from the scene. Fix the sterile tables so that you keep them clean. Basic rule is don't touch if it's great and green, but say fascinating so that you appear keen. Uh... A strike through is when through it's so sterile the knot Or other way, but either way, you should know that we got to try reducing the occurrence Cause it is known to compromise the sterile field and the onus is on you Okay, a couple other things here before we wrap up Basically the idea is you want to try and keep the microorganisms to a minimum the way to do that is make sure you have your hand on your mask every time you walk into the OR You want to minimize talking when possible because there is some evidence to show that it may be associated with increased infection You want to minimize traffic to the OR and you want to try and minimize your body count in the OR. So if you don't have to be in there, don't. Oh, and there's a stray. Don't touch that sun. So I hope that you have enjoyed this video entitled, Don't Touch That Sun. This video has been compiled within the guidelines of the General Surgery Clerkship Assignment for Year 3 students at the University of Alberta. My name is Mitch Wilson. I'm a member of the U of A Medical Class of 2014. I'm specifically addressing the procedural skills objectives set out by our Faculty of Medicine requiring a third year student intern to demonstrate proper sterile technique. In this video, I have addressed several key entities of defining, establishing, and maintaining a sterile field in the operating room. The operating room can be an intimidating place for first-time learners, and it often takes several exposures to be comfortable with the sterile field. Understanding the fundamental goals and basic outlines for the sterile field will help you become more confident and indeed competent when you first enter the OR. I would like to review the basic principles of the sterile field and the goals of asepsis as presented in this video. To begin, it is important to understand that while establishing a no-organism environment is an unattainable ideal, the goal of the sterile field is to minimize and prevent peri- and intraoperative contamination. Adequate establishment and maintenance of the sterile field has been shown to unequivocally reduce mortality and morbidity associated with surgical site infections. So here are some basic rules that have been presented which should be kept in mind when in the operating room. Rule number one, the patient is the center of the sterile field. 
the sterile field is ultimately established to prevent infection of the site to which the patient is operated on. The patient is therefore the primary focus of the operating room, even if some surgeons may disagree. Rule number two. Only sterile items are allowed in the sterile field. This may seem obvious, but it can become easy to forget when you are nervous on your first experience. Please note, once you have scrubbed in, you have become part of the sterile field. Rule number three. Sterile people are gowned and gloved. Once you have properly scrubbed in with a sterile gown and gloves, you are required to keep your hands above your waist and in sight at all times. Any area beyond the highlighted region shown in this photo should be avoided from contact. Your arms are considered unsterile beyond your elbow, as is your back. Do not touch your face, fold your arms under your armpits, or scratch your butt while scrubbed in. This may provide momentary satisfaction, but at the expense of the embarrassment when you are asked to degown and re-scrub. Rule number four. Tables are sterile only at or above the table level. Regardless of draping, the level of the table is considered the cutoff for sterility. If an object falls below this line, do not attempt to retrieve it. Rule number five, sterile persons touch only sterile items or areas. Again, this seems obvious, but it is very tempting to grab the operating lights before they have sterile handles placed. This is true for many facets of the operating room. Number six, only sterile items touch sterile surfaces. Number seven, if unsterile, do not reach over sterile surfaces. Keep at least a foot from all sterile items and be consciously aware of the sterile field when you are not scrubbed in the operating room. Number eight, draping is always towards yourself first. Although it is unlikely you will participate in the draping portion of the operation initially, if you should be asked, avoid reaching over unsterile areas. Be sure to stand back from the table when draping to avoid contact with the unsterile area. Rule number nine. Edges of anything that encloses sterile contents is unsterile. If you are asked to open packages such as gloves to provide to the scrub nurse, open packages away from you. Secure flaps so that they do not dangle when the sterile individual reaches for the sterile item. A containing wrapper is considered unsterile within one inch of the wrapper. Finally, glued edges in peel open packages are not considered sterile. Rule number 11. The sterile field is created as close as possible to the time of use. Number 12. Keep the sterile field in view. To avoid accidental contamination, be aware of the sterile field at all times. Number 13. Maintain sterility in the sterile field. This is a broad rule which I have used to express movement when sterile. Sterile individuals should face the sterile field when moving around it. When passing another individual, pass back to back or less ideally front to front but not opposite each other. Finally, stay within the sterile field at all possible times. Intuitively, reducing movement will reduce the possibility of contamination. Number 14, unsterile persons should avoid sterile areas. As mentioned, keep at least one foot from the sterile field and face the field when moving around it so that you are continually aware of where the field is in relation to you. Expect that circulating nurses will attempt to minimize activity near the sterile field. Rule number 15. Destruction of the integrity of microbial barriers is equivalent to contamination. As mentioned in the video, a strike through is when fluid soaks through the barrier from sterile to non-sterile or vice versa. This breaches the integrity of the field. Number 16. Keep microorganisms to a minimum. This is to say that you should be consciously making every effort to reduce the potential for organism transfer. Always apply a scrub cap and mask before entering the operating room. Minimize talking when possible. Minimize traffic in and out as well as around the operating room. And finally, the more people in the operating room at one time, the greater the risk of infection. 
If you do not have a purpose for being in the operating room, you should not be there. Number 17. When in doubt, it's not stare off. Just like your mother used to say, if you're not sure, don't touch it. Number 18. As the final rule, this is perhaps the most important rule as a medical student. Addressing the scrub nurse's tray, don't touch that son. Thank you sincerely for listening to the entirety of this video. I hope that you have found at least some of this material useful. While the operating room can be an intimidating initial experience, there is no experience that can quite compare to it. The privilege that you have as a medical provider to be involved in the care of this individual at their most vulnerable time is one that should not be taken for granted. Good luck, and I hope you enjoy your experience in surgery.